Welcome to the Christian Pattern, the podcast where we deal with the pure, unadulterated teachings of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, guys, take two on this. <laughs> Can't be been kind of hypersensitive, hypersensitive to sound. But today we're going to sing the LDS hymn, The First No Will. Then after that, we will sing hymn number 303, Keep the Commandments. And then we'll have an opening prayer. The first Noel, the angels did say, Words for certain for shepherds in fields of they lay. In fields of they creep in the shepherds. No way, no way, no way, no way. The ones that we Let's get to uh, sorry about that technical difficulties with this crazy phone. LDS hymns keep the commandments. Now, let's go ahead and go to that. It's the hymn number 303 keep the commandments. We can get this thing to cooperate here. There we go. Here we go. Loud, long, and strong, saints. Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. In this very safety. And yes, there is he. He will send blessings. He will send blessings. Words of a prophet. Keep the commandments. In this there is safety. I'm free. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful this Saturday to come before Thee. Father, we are so grateful for the restoration of the gospel. I will always testify that the gospel has been restored because of Thee. Show me the truth. And this is what we've got to do. To be in obedience to Thy commandments all the days of our lives. And we say this humbly in appreciation to thee, in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from the second book of Nephi. About 559 through 545 B.C. And now, my beloved brethren, I have read these things that ye might know concerning the covenants of the Lord that he has covenanted with all the house of Israel. 
that he has spoken unto the Jews by the mouth of his holy prophets, even from the beginning down, from generation to generation, until the time comes that they shall be restored to the true church and fold of God, when they shall be gathered home to the lands of their inheritance, and shall be established in all their lands of promise. Behold, my beloved brethren, I speak unto you these things, that ye may rejoice and lift up your heads forever, because of the blessings which the Lord God shall bestow upon your children. For I know that ye have searched much, many of you, to know of things to come. Wherefore, I know that ye know that our flesh must waste away and die. Nevertheless, in our bodies we shall see God. Yea, I know that ye know that in the body he shall show himself unto those at Jerusalem from whence we came. For it is expedient that it should be among them. For it behooveth the great creator that he suffereth himself to become subject unto man in the flesh and die for all men, that all men might become subject unto him. For as death hath passed upon all men, to fulfill the merciful plan of the great creator, there must needs be a power of resurrection, and the resurrection must needs come unto man by reason of the fall. And the fall came by reason of transgression, and because man became fallen, they were cut off from the presence of the Lord. Wherefore, it must needs be an infinite atonement, save it should be an infinite atonement. This corruption could not put on incorruption. Wherefore, the first judgment which came upon man must needs have remained to an endless duration. And if so, this flesh must have laid down to rot and to crumble to its mother earth, to rise no more. O oh, the wisdom of God, his mercy and grace! For behold, if the flesh should rise no more, our spirits must become subject to that angel who fell from before the presence of the eternal God and became the devil to rise no more. And our spirits must have become like unto him, and we become devils, angels to a devil, to be shut out from the presence of our God and to remain with the father of lies in misery like unto himself. Yea, to that being who beguiled our first parents, who transformeth himself nigh unto an angel of light, and stirreth up the children of men unto secret combinations of murder, and all manner of secret works of darkness. O oh, how great the goodness of our God, who prepareth a way for our escape from the grasp of this awful monster, yea, that monster death and hell, which I call the death of the body, and also the death of the spirit. And because of the way of deliverance of our God, the Holy One of Israel, this death of which I have spoken, which is the temporal, shall deliver up its dead, which death is the grave. And this death of which I have spoken, which is the spiritual death, shall deliver up its dead, which spiritual death is hell. Wherefore, death and hell must deliver up their dead, and hell must deliver up its captive spirits, and the grave must deliver up its captive bodies, and the bodies and the spirits of men will be restored one to the other. And it is by the power of the resurrection of the Holy One of Israel. Oh, how great the plan of our God! For on the other hand, the paradise of God must deliver up the spirits of the righteous, and the grave deliver up the body of the righteous. And the spirit and the body is restored to itself again, and all men become incorruptible and immortal, and they are living souls, having a perfect knowledge like unto us in the flesh, save it be that our knowledge shall be perfect. Wherefore, we shall have a perfect knowledge of all our guilt and our uncleanness and our nakedness. And the righteous shall have a perfect knowledge of their enjoyment and their righteousness, being clothed with purity, yea, even with the robe of righteousness. And it shall come to pass that when all men shall have passed from this first death unto life, insomuch as they have become immortal, they must appear before the judgment seat of the Holy One of Israel. And then cometh the judgment, and then must they be judged according to the holy judgment of God. And assuredly, as the Lord liveth, for the Lord God hath spoken it, and it is his eternal word, which cannot pass away, that they who are righteous shall be righteous still, and they who are filthy shall be filthy still. 
Wherefore, they who are filthy are the devil and his angels, and they shall go away into everlasting fire prepared for them. And their torment is as a lake of fire and brimstone, whose flame ascendeth up forever and ever, and has no end. O the greatness and the justice of our God, for he executeth all his words, and they have gone forth out of his mouth, and his law must be fulfilled. But, behold, the righteous, the saints of the Holy One of Israel, they who have believed in the Holy One of Israel, they who have endured the crosses of the world and despised the shame of it, they shall inherit the kingdom of God, which was prepared for them from the foundation of the world, and their joy shall be full forever. O the greatness of the mercy of our God, the Holy One of Israel! For he delivereth his saints from that awful monster, the devil, and death, and hell, and that lake of fire and brimstone, which is endless torment. O how great the holiness of our God! For he knoweth all things, and there is not anything save he knows it. And he cometh into the world, that he may save all men, if they will hearken unto his voice. For behold, he suffereth the pains of all men, yea, the pains of every living creature, both men, women, and children, who belong to the family of Adam. And he suffereth this, that the resurrection might pass upon all men, that all might stand before him at the great and judgment day. And he commandeth all men that they must repent, and be baptized in his name, having perfect faith in the Holy One of Israel, or they cannot be saved in the kingdom of God. And if they will not repent, and believe in his name, and be baptized in his name, and endure to the end, they must be damned. For the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, has spoken it. Wherefore he has given a law, and where there is no law given, there is no punishment. And where there is no punishment, there is no condemnation. And where there is no condemnation, the mercies of the Holy One of Israel have claim upon them because of the atonement. For they are delivered by the power of him. For the atonement satisfieth the demands of his justice upon all those who have not the law given to them. That they are delivered from that awful monster, death and hell, and the devil, and the lake of fire and brimstone, which is endless torment. And they are restored to that God who gave them breath, which is the Holy One of Israel. But woe unto him that has the law given, yea, that has all the commandments of God like unto us, and that transgresseth them, and that wasteth the days of his probation, for awful is his state. O oh, that cunning plan of the evil one! O oh, the vainness, and the frailties, and the foolishness of men! When they are learned, they think they are wise, and they hearken not unto the counsel of God, for they set it aside, supposing they know of themselves. Wherefore, their wisdom is foolishness, and it profiteth them not, and they shall perish. But to be learned is good, if they hearken unto the counsels of God. But woe unto the rich, who are rich as to the things of the world. For because they are rich, they despise the poor, and they persecute the meek, and their hearts are upon their treasures. Wherefore, their treasure is their God, and behold, their treasure shall perish with them also. And woe unto the deaf that will not hear, for they shall perish. Woe unto the blind that will not see, for they shall perish also. Woe unto the uncircumcised of heart, for a knowledge of their iniquities shall smite them at the last day. Woe unto the liar, for he shall be thrust down to hell. Woe unto the murderer, who deliberately killeth, for he shall die. Woe unto them who commit whoredoms, for they shall be thrust down to hell. Yea, woe unto those that worship idols, for the devil of all devils delighteth in them. And, in fine... Woe unto all those who die in their sins, for they shall return to God, and behold his face, and remain in their sins. O oh, my beloved brethren, remember the awfulness in transgressing against that holy God, and also the awfulness of yielding to the enticings of that cunning one. Remember, to be carnally minded is death, and to be spiritually minded is life eternal. O oh, my beloved brethren, give ear to my words. Remember the greatness of the Holy One of Israel. 
Do not say that I have spoken hard things against you. For if ye do, ye will revile against the truth. For I have spoken the words of your maker. I know that the words of truth are hard against all uncleanness. But the righteous fear them not, for they love the truth and are not shaken. O oh, then, my beloved brethren, come unto the Lord, the Holy One. Remember that his paths are righteous. Behold, the way for man is narrow, but it lieth in a straight course before him. And the keeper of the gate is the Holy One of Israel. And he employeth no servant there. And there is none other way, save it be by the gate. For he cannot be deceived, for the Lord God is his name. Now we will go to Galatians chapter 2. Got some catch-up reading to do there. And then I will give my brief analysis. All right. All right. All right. Talking about the uh, false brethren. To whom we gave place by subjection. Oh, I can't think we did this. Uh, yeah, okay. So nine, uh, 9 through 16. And when James Cephas in the place of Cephas. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, that we should go into the, gen the heathen, <laughs> that we should go into the nations, and they unto the circumcised. Only they would that we should remember the poor. The same which I also was forward to do. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I was to him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, hearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulations. But when I saw that he walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter, before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature, and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that, that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, shall no flesh be justified. This is an interesting uh, piece to me. It can be hard to understand. Except to say this. Say you're in a room full of people. 
okay? Some that are in the church and that are, are outside the church. I think what Paul is trying to preach here is that we cannot be or act any differently outside the church in, 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 in many ways, especially knowing that we're in the gospel. And I'm just as guilty as this as, as anybody. But I think what it is, it was, it was an apostasy going on. And Peter was carried in that apostasy, but he was trying to to, um, to to teach one thing, but live another. And and that's something we have to do is to live the gospel. If we're going to teach it, we need to live by the gospel, and that means you know, and also in many ways having the companionship of the Holy Ghost because if you're not living in accordance in the way that if you're living in a way in accordance that might offend the spirit then you can't teach what you say you believe goes back to living what you believe so with that I hope so with that I hope you enjoy listening to Christian Pattern if you like what you hear, please subscribe and join the Christian Pattern Community Family. This is Jimmy Hendricks saying until next time, remember who you are, read your scriptures, and please, please, please preach the gospel. And remember this, from the bottom of my heart, Jimmy loves you. I really, really, really love you. God bless you, and have a blessed day.